Anthony Grasso here, bringing you financial news that you can use. In this particular video, I'm going to do a stock review on Veru. Is this biopharmaceutical company that's trying to get FDA emergency use approval for its COVID drug, as well as for the stock that looks like a candidate for a short squeeze right now, with over 30% of its shares being shorted, worth investing in? Well, let's find out together. I'm going to go over a summary of the company, its product offerings, recent headline news, financials, analyst projections, and I'm going to give it my buy, hold, or sell recommendation for both your short-term and long-term growth investors out there. As always, folks, don't forget to smash that like button down below. Definitely helps. And consider subscribing. Hit that notification bell if you like your daily stock reviews and recommendations from an unbiased source. So let's get right into it. So this video is brought to you by Weevil, which is an online brokerage trading platform where you can buy stocks, options, ETFs, and cryptocurrencies. If you sign up today and deposit any amount, you can get up to 12 free stocks by using my referral link in the description down below. All right, so Veru is a oncology biopharmaceutical company with a focus on developing medicines for the management of breast and prostate cancers. Now, the company's segments are research and development and sexual health business. Now, the company has various drug products under clinical development. Activities related to these potentially drug candidates uh, products are included in the research and development segment. Now, the company's uh, sexual health business segment includes its C2 female condom product for the protection against unintended pregnancy and sexually transmitted infections and a drug candidate and TATFI, which is uh, for the treatment of benign prostatic. Now, they're also developing novel medicines for the COVID-19. Now, the company is formerly known as the Female Health Company has changed its name to Veru in July 2017. It's incorporated in 1971 and is headquartered in Miami, Florida. Let's look at go ahead and look at some of the news of the company right now. So back in April, news came out that the company's drug cut COVID-19 deaths by 55% and hospitalized patients. This is when the stock went parabolic for a time. Now, Veru is in discussions with other regulatory agencies globally regarding emergency use authorization authorization for uh, Sab is a Sab is a Berlin, including uh, the European Medicines Agency. Now, the company prepares for its U.S. commercial launch if the U EUA is granted as well. And then in June, uh, it was reported that Veru requested that FDA emergency use nod for its COVID-19 treatment could be only a month away. Notes that there's currently no FDA approval right now or authorized COVID-19 therapeutics in the hospital setting that can achieve over a 50% relative reduction in deaths. Hence, the drug that they're developing can potentially become a new standard of care for hospitalized moderate to severe COVID-19 patients if the EUA application is granted. And then on uh, August 11th, uh, let me bring it here. August 11th, uh, Veru reported its third quarter fiscal 20, 2022 financial result, uh, results and the progress uh, and the treatment for the COVID-19 towards its regulatory decisions in key territory, even though they don't have it yet. Now, let's look at, go ahead and look at the fundamentals of the company right now. So the stock is currently trading at $21.65 a share. And uh, I just want to bring this up real quick. So uh, with under the analysis, the short interest, we have uh, 20.9 million shares being short interest at the moment. That's uh, definitely a lot. Now, the company has a market capitalization right now of around $1.6 billion. Now, the company is projected to have $47.4 million revenue in 2022 with earnings of negative $66 million. Now, the revenues are projected to increase over time over the next few years to around $173 million by the end of 2024 and have positive earnings of $39 million. That's if all of these drugs that are currently in clinical trials actually make it to market. So all these analysts are projecting approvals for all their drug candidates. And if that happens, they should have significant more revenue right now than right now. And, and then they become positive uh, in earnings in two to three years. Now let's go over some key measures of the company. Looking at the valuation analysis, because the earnings at Veru are not available, the price to sales and the price to book ratio is the most appropriate valuation measures right now. Therefore, this company seems highly valued with the price to sales ratio of over 30 times. It's one of the highest in the, in the industry. Now, it's also supported by a price to book ratio of 6.93 times. That's also the highest in the industry. 
Now, looking at the profitability of this company, now it appears to be an inefficient company. While its profitability is among the best on a gross margin basis, its bottom line, the net margin, is only in line with the industry median. They also do not pay any dividends uh, at the moment. And looking at the growth, uh, they saw they saw earnings decline in spite of positive revenue growth during the past 12 months. Additionally, the average company in the industry uh, was able to improve its earnings result over the same period. The earnings are go are, are forecasted to grow about 80.18 percent per year, and is expected to become profitable over the next three years. But but with the growth of any biopharmaceutical company. It in line relies on the drugs in clinical stages. So if they can't get those drugs approved, that's going that number is going to decrease uh, significantly. But so that that's that's the risky bet. You know, that's rolling the dice. Looking at the financial strength of the company right now, it appears to have little financial risk as the liquid assets shown on its balance sheet are more than enough to eradicate its current debt load. The short-term assets of 128 million exceed both its short-term liabilities of 27 million and its long-term liabilities of 15.9 million. Now, Vero uh, has a sufficient cash runway for more than three years based on its current free cash flow model. So what do the analysts say specifically regarding uh, this company? Now, the analysts have a buy to strong buy on, on this company right now, and they have a price target of $35 a share with a high being $55 and a low being $24 a share. Now, if we go over some of the analyst reports that I found, the Street Quant Ratings report uh, rates it as a sell recommendation that's driven by multiple of weaknesses, which uh, they believe have a greater impact than any of its strengths and could be, make it more difficult for investors to achieve positive results compared to the most of the stocks that they cover. They said the company's weaknesses can be seen in multiple of areas such as deteriorating net income, disappointing return on equity, weak operating cash flow, and feeble growth in its earnings per share. And the Ford Equity Research uh, Report has a hold recommendation on this company. It's a result of their systematic analysis of three basic characteristics, earning strength, relative valuation, and recent stock price movement. Now, the company has suffered a very negative trend in earnings per share over the past five quarters because the company lacks sufficient analyst estimate data. They place greater weight on the historical earnings per share trend at the, as the measure of the earning strength. Based on operating earnings yield, the company is overvalued when compared to all the companies they offer. Share price change over the past year indicates Vero will perform well over the near term. Now, the CFRA report has a sell recommendation on this company it's based on uh, its score from its quantitative model for the United States. Valuation and quality model subcategories were the two largest drivers for that. The valuation uh, includes factors such as the price to earnings, price to EBITDA, and price to cash flow. And the quality uh, marks were include factors to consider profitability, cash flow generation, operating efficiency, and earnings quality. So based on all that information, let me bring it back over here. Am I a buy, hold, or sell recommendation on, on Veru? Now, here are my thoughts regarding that specifically. Now, looking at the stock price right now of over $21 a share uh, and short position since April, something unusual is starting to happen regarding this company specifically. Um, the short positions went from 4 to 5% of the outstanding shares to well over 20 million shorts right now, uh, 20 million shares being shorted, which represents around 30% of the shares outstanding. A whale with a lot of money uh, to spend has also taken a noticeable bullish stance on Veru. Analysts lifting next year's revenue estimates while at the same time increasing their loss per share forecast to reflect the cost of achieving this growth. You gotta ramp up production. The long-term trajectory of the company's earnings is a lot more important than just next year's alone, and it's on the decline for 2023 before it makes the incline, and hopefully they, they all their drugs get approved uh, in clinical trials, and, and, and they can make some money, but if, if the drugs don't, they're, they're going to lose a lot. Now, the company has overall promise in the future with the drugs that are currently in the clinical trials. Now, the current fundamentals are right now are disconnected from the current stock price fluctuations. It's currently way overvalued. It's, it's disconnected and gone to the moon already. The bulls are betting on a possible FDA emergency use authorization for the phase three uh, COVID-19 drug. Now the president of Veru has recently stated, quote, 
we expect to have significant near-term revenue from the drug for the treatment of hospitalized COVID-19 patients at high risk for ARDS if the EUA is granted by the US uh, FDA. So based on all of that information, it rests on those drugs, those COVID-19 drugs. That's what investors are, are, are hopping about right now. So based on all that, I'm gonna break down my recommendation into two parts, one for the long-term growth investor and two for the short-term day trader. Here we go. This is a highly risky speculative bet. Biotechnology stocks have the potential to provide investors with incredible returns. Even analysts at financial institutions can have a poor track record when trying to predict the performance of a biotech company. The business of curing diseases can be a lucrative one, and investors jump on the bandwagon for any stock that shows a promise of a big breakthrough. And when I say fear of missing out, this is FOMO in action. For the long-term growth investor, I right now, I recommend a sell position. Even with the projected increases in revenue with the drugs and clinical trials right now and possible emergency youth authorization, has the stock already priced in potential future earnings and revenues? And I do not see the fundamentals there to support the current stock price of over $20 a share. Now the CEO projects a massive influx of revenue from that one drug alone, but there's nothing concrete regarding that specifically. It's potentially millions and millions of dollars, but we shall see. If and when the company does get the FDA emergency use authorization for the COVID-19 drug, there might be an initial massive pump up in the stock price. But in my professional opinion regarding the fundamentals, it would crash right back down to reality when the falling quarter's numbers start trickling in throughout the year. And I see this stock coming back down to around $10 a share. I, I foresee like a 20 to $25 mark over a year and a half. So we already reached $20 a share, and I see them getting to 20 to $25 a share in the next two years. But they made that jump so quickly. And as fast as it comes up, it can come back down. But if you're betting that the emergency use authorization comes in, buy it for the short term. So this gets me into for the short term day trader recommendation out there. Now, if you're looking for a possible short squeeze pump in the market, there might be something brewing with this, you know, who knows regarding that. But taking consideration, 30% of the shares outstanding are being shorted. There's a lot of options trading going on with this. Even if even enough short-term investors wanted to pump the stock and force the short sellers to squeeze, the price in the short term could go par parabolic. Just look at AMC. Now, I'm not one to speculate on the Wall Street Army coming into this stock and, and you know massively pumping it up, but anything is possible. But what are your thoughts? Please leave your comments down below. So there you have it, folks. And as always, don't forget to smash that like button down below. Definitely helps. And consider subscribing. and hit that notification bell for like your daily stock reviews and recommendations from an unbiased source. Until the next stock update video later today, folks. Ciao.